As promised, here is my CD collection. Bear in mind that this collection is pretty thick, so I'm gonna be pretty fast with it. Up first, we got Aaliyah's I Care For You, a compilation album. Not too much to say about it other than rest in peace to the late Aaliyah. And this is a really good compilation of songs. Up next, Ace Entertainment's Take Notes Volume 1. So fun fact, there are no ways of listening to this officially unless you have the CD. So I don't know if I if y'all want me to upload it, but it is a more R&B type album. And fun fact, I got this from an assistant teacher back in my 7th grade year which was about five years ago at this point. Next, The Diary of Alicia Keys by Alicia Keys. A really nice album. Her, Aaliyah, Destiny's Child, and a couple of other R&B artists were the ones that kind of got me into the whole swing of things with this. Really nice cover, really good songs and production. Just an overall great album. Up next, Childish Gambino's Because the Internet. I got introduced to Childish Gambino because of the Bonfire music video. When I listened to the album that the song was on, didn't really like it. It wasn't really great. This album, however, is the complete opposite. It is probably my favorite project out of anything that Childish Gambino has dropped. Definitely take a listen to it if you can. Up next, Earl Sweatshirt's Doris. Doris is a mixed bag for me, but I still really enjoy this album for its variety. And the inner cover is really nice. How are you feeling? Like shit. Plus, it includes a whole uh, thing for all the lyrics that's in here. Up next, we got Earl Sweatshirt's Feet of Clay. This one's also a mixed bag, but I enjoy this one just a little bit more for its experimentality. It's very murky, but I really like it because of that. My favorite songs off of there, I'd probably say would be Entomb and El Toro Combo Meal. Up next, we got Earl Sweatshirt's Sick. It's a complete flip from Feet of Clay, but I still really like this album. The freestyle on here is really, really hard, and just the overall production, lyrics, everything about this album, really good. I can't have a collection of Earl Sweatshirt albums without the one and only Some Rap Songs. This album was my introduction to Earl Sweatshirt and was a really good one at that. Probably one of my favorite projects to date by Earl Sweatshirt. And as the infamous man once said, bars. Can't, can't say that word. If you watched my previous video, you'll already know what this album is. J. Dilla Donuts. I got this album both on vinyl and of course CD. Still a really clean instrumental only album by the late and great J. Dilla. I want y'all to excuse the quality of the case as uh, I did get this from a Goodwill, but Kanye West's Graduation. Still probably one of my top favorite albums I know. I'm pre it's pretty popular and oversaturated opinion. But it still stands. I enjoy this album way too much. Next. Kanye West, The College Dropout. Definitely a really good listen and a great album altogether. Don't really have much to say about it other than go listen to it or you're missing out. Up next, Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. This was a bit before the vinyl came out, so the only way that I got this was on my birthday and I had to get it on CD. This is a really good comeback album. Uh, quote comeback. He just hadn't made an album in like years. Still probably one of my favorite albums by him. One of my many favorite albums by him. Um, Worldwide Steppers, still one of my favorite songs off here. Up next, we have The Miseducation of Lauren Hill by Lauren Hill. This album was my introduction to her along with uh, the score by the Fugees, which of course she's included. Every track on here is just great. I don't really know what else to say other than every track. Every track. This next one should be pretty obvious and should be in everybody's collection if they do collect CDs. Mad Villainy's Mad Villain, made by the late and great MF Doom and Mad Lib. A great collection of raps and beats all together. Super bumpy, super just... Uh, it's just good. It's just really, really good. Unfortunately, when I got it from Amazon, part of the case literally got messed up, as in the inside part got, got taken a bit off, which I don't really like. Also, you get all the lyrics inside the little cover right here. I love jewel cases. Up next, Pusha T's Daytona, the literal definition of quality over quantity. A very short, but really, really well-made album. This, this album's still on my, like, loop. I still listen to this a fair amount. Up next, we got Roddy Rich's Please Excuse Me For Being Antisocial. If you don't recognize this cover, 
you probably weren't around in 2019 when the box meme was a was a crazy thing overall not that bad of an album but definitely could have been better at least to me up next Call Me If You Get Lost. I remember I listened to this album a day early because of my friend Underdog, which props to him. This album was a complete flip from his previous one. His whole thing with variety and just go branching off in different paths with every drop, it's honestly crazy to me. Up next, we got Tyler the Creator's Cherry Bomb. This album has the most conflicting views that I've ever heard from people. Anthony Fantano absolutely despising this album, but me, however, really enjoying this album for its chaos. I wouldn't be a Tyler fan without this being in my collection. Tyler the Creator's Igor. Still probably one of my favorite albums ever. I know, it's an extremely popular and very oversaturated opinion, but I don't care. I enjoy this album more than anything. Up next, we got Flower Boy. I got introduced to Tyler the Creator because of the music video for Who Dat Boy. And from then on, I just decided, hey, I'm gonna listen to some of his older stuff and look where we are now. Really great album. Definitely give it a listen. Next up on our list, Tyler the Creator's Wolf. Definitely an interesting project, but I'm really glad that Wolf is in the direction that it is because this was right after Goblin. Goblin was probably my least favorite album to listen to. Definitely not a great album to me. It's not too, too bad, but it's still kind of bad. This album, however, completely flips the script, still keeps some of the edginess, but is overall a really, really solid album. And last but not least, we got Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers. I don't really have much to say other than uh, me and the family are really, really solid fans of Wu-Tang Clan, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buy this album because I would listened to it before. Totally not for the fact that it has cream on it. It's overall a great, great album. If y'all want me to do any more music content or if y'all want to give me any ideas, please do them in the, in the comment section below. Thank you.